This clinical review is about sequence of post-endodontic rehabilitation of tooth for crown. Let's go. Hello dear friends. This time in our issue of BG Dental Cases we will discuss very interesting clinical case about post-endodontic rehabilitation and uh, using crown as the final uh, restoration. So let us start. Uh, here you can see initial situation and big composite filling. Actually, if you will uh, notice, it is already crown made in patient's mouth with composite. And uh, the only very small portion of sound tooth structure was kept from the palatal side. Why I'm saying that is because of indications. If I have, in such a cases, the huge surface covered with composite or carious defects and I need to replace it, the only way for my side in such a cases will be crown restoration, which is already made before me. I need just to make a finish line to, to, to make a proper design of the crown and that's it and we are ready for next step. So patient went to another clinic for a root canal retreatment and afterwards she came back for, uh, the restorat for restorative part to myself with temporary filling. So you can see now temporary filling after um, retreatment. The first step I did is I made isolation. I used split dam because split dam isolation helps to get really nice conditions and to block mouth cavity so we don't have breathing, saliva, etc. And I have also access to soft tissues and in this case we had uh, pretty deep defects from mesial and from distal side. So now I can work with my electrosurgery, I can provide retraction and I can then prep this tooth using split down because it will give me some benefits of extra access uh, to the tooth because of the retraction of soft tissues. Um, we posted few pictures from that case on our Instagram account and also on Facebook and we got a lot of questions from our colleagues regarding um, restoration, restorative part. How do we choose what kind of restoration to provide to patient after endodontic treatment? Should we use post or we can do just core build up or we have to go for metal posts or maybe post and, and core restorations and so on. On that example, I would like to say that as we discussed just this case, so how do I um, evaluate the situation and how do I make my decision to do any of types of restoration. So in this case we have very deep pulp chamber. We work on molar teeth. On molar teeth we have almost um, vertical occlusal forces with a really slight lateral occlusal forces which is not good. So molar has to have vertical forces so we are not afraid to make to have some deep bonding because of the lateral occlusal forces so this is the step number one another thing is pulp chamber if you have very deep pulp chamber pulp chamber itself is very good retentive zone so when you use just composite with no posts it will work perfectly and also in this case we had walls from palatal side and from vocal side we had walls that are where higher than two and a half millimeters. So we have a lot of, ret a lot of uh, retention. That's why we decided just to do composite core build up and then preparation and that's it. Uh, I used um, the dual cure core, core build up material from Bisco, Bis Core or Bis Light Core, I don't remember exactly the name of the product, you, just, you can just Google Bisco if you want. Um, dual cure core build up material or you can use any different uh, brand it's not an, an advertisement that you have to buy only this one there are many different products like from DMG Luxa Core from Densply Core X Flow and many other products so basically you can choose whatever you want this one I like because when I prep it 
uh, the feeling that I prep dentin. So the material is not softer than dentin, which is better when you do preparation. And uh, it, it is more controlled, let's say. Uh, how did I prepare so, uh, pulp chamber? A few tips about uh, preparing the surface of tooth before bonding procedures. I personally prefer to use sandblaster and aluminum oxide to provide con cleaning of the the dentine enamel and then I can go to my uh, normal adhesive protocol etching, rinsing, drying, bonding and then we use this color composite material. But the problem is that when you use a sandblaster with aluminum oxide and there is exposed gingiva, uh, you will have barbecue. So basically you have to protect gingiva with something otherwise you will have bleeding. Uh, if you use normal um, isolation with normal rubidam where, uh, where every single tooth is isolated there is no problem but in this case we use split dam so the tip is very simple you can use liquid dam or any flowable composite you just insert this liquid dam or flowable comp composite around this tooth light cure and then you can sandblast then you will remove this flowable composite or, or liquid dam then you go because if you will forget to remove your flowable composite or liquid dam and then you will do core buildup it may be bonded to your uh, liquid dam or this flowable composite, so preparation will be a little bit more difficult. So we made this trick, we removed uh, our barrier, and then we go with our adhesive protocol, injected core build-up material. In this case, I didn't use any metric system. The material is not so fluid, so I can control inserting or injection this material. Then we light cured, we wait for a few minutes, and then I was able to prep this one for crown. I would like to make some announcement. Uh, if you are interested, guys, in uh, techniques how to restore teeth after endodontic treatment, and also how to provide endodontic tri treatment properly, like primary endo retreatment procedures, I invite you to come to our training center and to participate in our module 4 from endodontics to restoration course. This course can be visited separately, so it, don't, it doesn't matter that there is number 4 in the title, so you have to at attend module 1, 2 and 3. No, you can just go for this one. Uh, it is one day course, we work on extracted teeth inserted into phantom, so basically we work as on real patients. We do primary endo, retreatments, build-ups and preparations. And I can say that this is the only one course, endo course, where we do preparations also. So we teach all things in one shot. So, um, let me go back to our clinical case and I would like to share with you now how did I prep this tooth for a crown. Having this split dam, there is a very good opportunity to prep because there is no saliva, there is no cheeks, tongue, so you can control process more properly. And here you can see the full process of preparation around using mirror. The mirror is a very good tool. Actually, this tool that we have to learn how to use in proper way, not just for cheek retraction, but like our instrument to visualize process of treatment, especially when you do preps. You can do a lot of preparations directly with direct vision, but how difficult it is to control distal lingual or distal mesial transition. Sometimes it is impossible to control, you cannot see it. With mirror you can see. So basically, uh, the rough preparation here was done with a uh, with a uh, coarse burrs very quickly. And now you can see the final step of preparation when I'm using red diamond burr, uh, low speed, about 50, 60,000 RPM, and you can see how can we actually control everything with our mirror. Few tricks: you have to put your mirror as far as you can and uh, this way your mirror will be dry when you work with water and there is some uh, small cheating in, 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 in such a cases especially mm, it comes from electric motor if you are looking forward to buy electric motor maybe you don't have it or maybe you would like to upgrade your electric motor I would like strongly to recommend you to pay attention to very important option there is an option to give you additive air spray 
through electric motor to your handpiece. So literally you can switch off water and instead of water it will be blowing the air uh, additively. So there is a special option. No, not every single electric motor can give you this possibility. So you have to ask your supplier if there is an option. So you just put a button, extra, extra air and you have your air spray from your handpiece. So basically and on the speed of 50,000 RPM with this powerful air spray there is no overheating as you, are dry, as you are working in dry mode. If you are afraid you can decrease speed mode and also you can ask your assistant to give you additive uh, air and water spray from assistant side using, uh, using, using triplex. But believe me, if you will get this option like additive air spraying from your electric motor towards your handpiece you will be very happy because it is very useful and comfortable. Let me show you also a uh, position uh, where we can do it with direct vision. So basically patient is laying on uh, horizontally and uh, the chin is up the head turned to side so I can see occlusal surface and I can see also buccal surface. If I will turn head of my patient to opposite side I will be able to see some parts of palatal side. All these tricks regarding the protocols of preparations for crowns and ergonomics we will cover on our online masterclass that will be very soon. Uh, online masterclass that you can find on our webpage online.belagrad.com preparation for full crowns posterior teeth. So I will show you protocols and I will show you more in detail how to work with mirror, how to work with direct vision and uh, we also have the similar uh, online masterclass about anterior crown preparations. If you missed anterior crown preparation you may get special offer to participate in two online masterclasses about posterior crowns and anterior crowns, the all information you may find on our web page. Okay, so let's go. Uh, after preparation was finished we, w we went to another step, so we actually we ended up with, uh, with a such a view and we can, or, uh, we can move on to another other step. We can, uh, we have to control bleeding here because the preparations were pretty deep in, in between teeth so we have to make our field more dry but I can say even now uh, it looks not bad, correct? Because we use electric motor and increasing handpiece and red burr and when you touch ginger it, it is not bleeding that much as with turbine. But for impression or for intraoral scanner I prefer to get more um, powerful uh, bleeding control let's say. So the trick is I took out the first cord and then I put hemostatic liquid there. You can use viscostate from Ultradent or any other product and then I put another cord over. This cord is impregnated, this one is impregnated with aluminum oxide I think. So we put this cord over our hemostatic liquid, we wait for a few minutes then you can rinse and then you can dry and afterwards you will have pretty dry field to go for um, impression or for intraoral scanner. By the way recently we uh, posted another clinical case review, uh, actually it was last time about crowns on lower teeth and we were discussing with you uh, tips and tricks with retraction and we got um, a lot of replies from colleagues with tips and tricks about retractions and I would like to thank everybody who participated in uh, discussion and I can say that our YouTube channel actually is growing because of you and, and uh, you motivate us to, 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 to perform uh, more and more um, useful dental stuff free of charge for everybody who wants to be better in dentistry. Uh, so I would like to ask you not, don't, to, uh, don't forget to sign up, just sign up to our YouTube channel. As many followers and subscribers will have, as more motivation we, ha we will have for next projects. So and I think everybody will benefit because the information that we share uh, sometimes is shared on conferences. Uh, dental congresses where people have to pay for the ticket but now it's everything with free access. Okay so uh, we made this 
retraction, then we made intraoral scanning process, then we fabricated a uh, printed model. We made actually several teeth. Uh, we mm, prepped uh, second molars, lower, upper jaw. So we had to fabricate this, this printed model to, to check our interproximal contacts and also fit in some deep margins. And uh, we actually posted that picture on our Instagram account and, and I got a very different comments. Some people were really amazed by retraction. They were, uh, we got compliments for the such a good retraction. But some people were really uh, against that type of retraction. They start to blame us. So there is apocalyptic retraction. How can you do that? So, uh, aggressive retraction and so on and so, so on. So for, for sensitive people, this is retraction and that's it. This is design of printed model. Our dental technician can design printed model in this way so that will be easier to control margins. So it's not retraction like it is. Okay, so it's just a design. And uh, we made uh, PFM, uh, PMMA, it's a PMMA, uh, PMMA crown, temporary crown, uh, because of the endodontic treatment. The endodontic treatment, the progno prognosis of endodontic treatment was not perfect. So we decided to do a PMMA crown, milled PMMA crown for uh, three months. I cemented this crown with uh, polycarboxylate cement and after three months, we will be able to have a fresh case, so I have no follow-up, actually. And uh, after three, three months, we will make another examination. If everything is all right, we will replace this PMMA crown for the, for, the, for the final one. But if you do such an approach for temporary crowns, you have to prep well, you have to isolate well, you have to retract well, you have to impress well to have your provisional crown or any different type of restoration prof perfectly fitted on the tooth structure. That will warranty you the good result. Okay, so we are done with this case. I would like to thank everybody for attention. Don't forget to sign up and uh, may the dental force be with you. See you next time, guys.